If I learned anything this week, I learned, my goodness, Blake Kraut sure can spin a good yarn, can he? Hey, what's up, bookworms? Welcome back to another weekly update where we are getting closer and closer to the holidays here in the States and around the world. We are officially in November, so we really are ramping up towards the end of the year. going to be all that lovely end of the year content coming real soon, but we got some more normality before all of that begins. But let's begin, guys, like usual, with what am I reading, like I just talked about there, uh, Blake Crouch. Uh, this guy continues to be a revelation for me. Uh, I know that this is not some hidden gem I found. I know that this is obviously a big time author and I'm seeing now why, because uh, last week when we spoke, I was about halfway through this one while I finished it and the next one over this past week. The Wayward Pines trilogy, fantastic, fantastic trilogy. And again, that makes Blake Crouch, if you're keeping the score at home, guys, five four five for me and mr crouch i am very excited that i have found this author i'm gonna everything that he writes from now on is going to be a day one read for me uh he's going straight to the top uh i think he's right there now i think i like him more than i like andy weir i've read two andy weirs and i really really liked him I, i'm making that comparison because i seem like they're the two like similar sort of modern authors that get a lot of attention and uh i, I really have enjoyed both that i've you know i've read seven total books between the two now and i've liked them both so those those two definitely will be a uh, day one reads for me for now on. I'm very, very excited, guys. I keep calling him the next Michael Crichton, and you know I wouldn't be handing something out like that if I didn't mean it. I think it's very, very exciting times for me. I'm looking forward to going back. Now, I'm not, I am a little bit worried, uh, you know, because uh, most authors do continue to improve over time until that moment when they lose their mojo. At least that's how it goes with a lot of authors. Uh, with this, I'm going to basically be going backwards now. So uh, I'm worried that, uh, you know, hey, well, is the, the quality going to uh, go backwards like it did when I went through all of Brandon Sanderson and you know, I'd read Stormlight, I'd read Mistborn, and then I went back to Elantris and I was like, ouch, you know, so I'm hoping it's not nothing like that. But I am very excited. The guy has a ton of books. You know, once I actually started really looking back, he has a ton of stuff. He's already written a lot of novellas, a lot of short stories. But uh, again, these weren't that long. Like, People are like, wow, you really blew through that really fast. I mean, guys, these books are, are small and they are very much just straight meat. You can just go right through them. They're that good. But uh, yeah, great, great stuff. The Wayward Pines trilogy. I'm going to be talking about it, I think, here pretty soon. Give myself a couple of days to kind of, you know, let it marinate a little bit before I get a, a video to go for it. But I'm going to review those as a whole, as a trilogy. And trying to do that uh, spoiler free without ruining that big, big twist that it has in book one. That'll be a lot of fun, but I cannot wait to do it. There's some people reading it on the Discord now, based off of uh, you know my hype for it, and uh, the, the, just wait, looking at their guesses that they have right now about what's going on. Just great because uh, guys, I had so many guesses and I was wrong on all of them. So the guy continues to uh, just amaze me, and I'm very very excited. I found him. I also uh, read some more. Uh, well, I guess I started Life of Pi. That was the next read I had up. And, of course, uh, some Dave Grohl here. Uh, this one really is just working through it as I can, you know, just whenever I, I feel like I need some uh, uh, something away from fiction for a minute. Uh, I think because uh, I love a rock autobiography. I think it's just great hearing these stories. And so far, this one only like 80 pages in, but it's already different from most uh, rock, rock star uh, autobiographies that I've read. And a uh, very interesting fellow, but I'm really, really enjoying the early stuff here pre Foo Fighters. I really can't wait to see all the stuff that he says about his time in Nirvana. That's what I'm really excited about. Now, Life of Pi, this is one where I loved the movie. I uh, loved the movie to death so much that uh, I wanted to read the book. I was afraid that um, the book might not get the same emotional reaction out of me. Now, I know that sounds weird because I'm always going to be a book, but the book was better guy. But yeah, in most cases, I read the book before I see the movie. So this is one of the first times in a while I'm doing it the other way around. But uh, I I'm surprised the first third of this is so much about his childhood, you know, because the movie, it seemed like uh, 20, 25 minutes in that movie, you, you were on the boat. And we're still not on the boat yet, and I'm about 100 pages in here. So I was actually really surprised about that and surprised about how much time is spent on his uh, his religious discovery. But a very interesting setup. I really like the foreword that Mr. Martell had at this beginning of this novel. Uh, really, really kind of sets the tone for what is to come. So uh, I'm enjoying it a lot so far, and I look forward to finishing that this week. And guys, yes, I am also back on the Berserk train. I started volume 25 of Berserk. I believe Falcon of the New Millennium Arc goes to 
Falcon of the New Millennium. Falcon, Millennium, Falcon of the Millennium Empire? I don't know why I can't remember the name of this. I just want to say Millennium Falcon the whole time. I think that's why. I think it goes to 34, so... Uh, you know it doesn't take a long time to fly through those berserk uh, trades uh, one at a time. But uh, for all the people who keep asking me, when's it coming? When's it coming, guys? I'm just, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish reading before the end of the year. I will talk about this arc. Okay, so this is the longest arc. It was gonna take a while. I had to kind of take a break during September and October because of those themed months, sci-fi September, spooky season. But now it's back to normality. So uh, that brings me, guys, to what am I going to read? All of a sudden, I'm gonna finish Life of Pi. Uh, all of a sudden, I'm going to keep working on the Dave Grohl autobiography, and I'm going to keep reading Berserk. But what about after that? Well, we will be back on the great Michael Crichton reread, and that is the last read I have for November, guys, is Rising Sun by Michael Crichton, a book that I think that um, it came after Jurassic Park, and he had impossible shoes to fill. But uh, I think Teenage Me wasn't quite ready for the things he was talking about in this. So I'm looking forward to uh, revisiting this one because I think there's a lot of things that really kind of flew over my head, especially now that I've... Uh, went and been through business school, I think I'm going to look at a lot of things differently than I did when I was 15 years old that I think I kind of missed in this book. Uh, but that, and I'm enjoying, I'm looking forward to uh, to seeing that movie, because I've never seen the movie. I uh, love Wesley Snipes. I love Sean Connery. So I don't know why I never saw it. I love Michael Crane, but it's one of those that I never saw the movie when it came out. I think it was as if it failed so bad at the box office. It was like in and out in like a week, and then I just kind of forgot about it, because this was one of the books that didn't really click with me that well when I was a teenager. So I'm very much looking forward to revisiting it, and then of course, watching that movie for the first time, because I do talk about the adaptations when I review Michael Crichton novels. And guys, that's, that's pretty much all I got going on for what I'm going to read. Uh, like I said, uh, I didn't expect to get through Wayward Pines in about, you know, eight days, I think, the whole trilogy. So um, that's just that just seems to be the MO now with all Blake Crouch stuff. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it for what I'm going to read. And then if I finish everything, guys, then we'll kind of go from there. You know, like I said, there is a holiday at the end of this month. I want to make sure that I'm staying available for that. There is a, a little thing called Wheel of Time starting soon, and we're going to be doing a lot more coverage for that on the channel here. So I um, just want to make sure that I'm leaving myself open for some stuff that might be uh, non-reading based, and we will see as it goes along. Let's go ahead and talk about this week on the channel's guy. I did go ahead and wrap up the month of October. I always enjoy doing that, just seeing kind of what really clicked with audiences, what did not. Uh, like I said in that video, I like to be transparent, make you guys feel like you are a part of the channel. That is why I continue to do those and talk about you know the most popular content, talk about goals for the next month, things like that. And of course, my book of the month. If you missed that and you want to know what my book of the month is, well, I've kind of already talked about it. But uh, <laughs> yeah, check that video out and it will tell you what my book of the month for October was uh, a slight spoiler. It was not a horror book, which is rather surprising. I don't know. It actually had some horror in it. I don't know. I don't know. We'll talk about that when I review those. Uh, I did my As the Wheel Turns. We just talked about going to do more Wheel of Time coverage. As the Wheel Turns had planned originally to be a wrap-up show. Uh, with with myself and and Madison Goodyear, I, I will link her channel below as my co-host on As the Wheel Turns. Uh, we both are, I think she's read it uh, once once and a half because she was doing a re read along a reread along, and then she kind of uh, realized that she didn't have the time to do everything, so she's read about half of that series uh, twice and the other half uh, just once, like I have. So. We don't pretend to be Wheel of Time experts. We're just two people who really enjoyed uh, our time through it, and we're very much looking forward to the TV series. So we talked about that final trailer that came out recently. We kind of broke that down and talked about everything. We liked what we thought. Uh, we're very excited for it, obviously. I think that trailer gave us even more hope than we originally had with that teaser trailer. But uh, it's going to, from here on, it's just going to be a uh, reaction show. We're going to do an episode for every new episode of the show. So, yes, you do know on the 19th there's going to be three episodes. So we're going to be talking about three episodes at first. So it might be a long one. Uh, I haven't talked to her about this. I'm hoping we can do, like, one episode for each. But I don't know. We will see. Uh, you know, we both have uh, families and kids and real life and stuff like that. So trying to make sure our schedules line up on time. We'll see what happens because we're both very, very excited to talk about this. And I think we both have that day off to make sure that we watch it right away. Then I went ahead and closed down Spooky Season, guys. We're talking about 10 horror novels that I want to read. And this was kind of a response to the big, uh, the, the 10 horror novels, my favorite of all time that I did last year that's just like the most popular non-Kindle video on this channel. Uh, I, I talked about 10 that I want to read because it really, most of it, 
was stuff that just everyone in that video was like, I can't believe you didn't put this and this and this. And I'm like, well, I can't put this and this and this if I haven't read this, this and this, right? So it, it really was just kind of letting people know, hey, I haven't read these. I'm aware of them and I like to read them. I clearly can't put them in my top 10 if I've never read them. Uh, so a lot of them were recommendations from that video and, and a few were ones I've just wanted to read on my own for a while. So I thought it was the appropriate way to close down spooky season. And that's stuff that I want to read between now and next Halloween. That is kind of my goal to kind of litter some horror in there instead of trying to cram it all in one month like I did this year. Did a review this week. Went ahead and did one for Childhood's End by Mr. Arthur C. Clarke. That is a, a one that uh, I think I was very, very pleasantly surprised with. I think when you got a, a legacy quite like Arthur C. Clarke, um, I think it's for a reason, and that book shows why it's considered a classic because I can took it, look at it now and see so many things I love about this genre that has just been completely ripped from that or inspired by that story. And it's, a, it's one that really will just stick in your head for just days afterwards because I like said I finished it in September guys I couldn't stop thinking about it I'm still thinking about it and it just it has just a sucker punch of an ending like I said especially if you have kids uh, I, I think it'll really stick with you but just uh, I, I think it's one of those you just need to read it guys because it's like like I said with I Am Legend it's just it's one of the pillars of the genre and I think that we need to read those titans that laid the groundwork for what we know as the genre today and that is absolutely one of them loved that book for sure my book of the month for september and it'll be on my top 10 at the end of the year without a doubt i loved it and then i did a live stream that's why this is a this this weekly update is taking place on saturday instead of friday because i did a, the weekly uh, the weekly updates usually on friday but this i did a three hour live stream guys uh, i wasn't going to do a weekly update after that uh, so, but if you didn't have three hours to sit there and listen to me uh, talk about everything that was kind of going on, that's why I said, hey, I'm just going to go ahead and move the weekly update to Saturday uh, this week. But uh, the live stream, I, I always have a lot of fun talking with you guys. I uh, love just answering questions on the fly like that. But like, uh, I try not to give too many I don't knows because uh, on the spot questions, sometimes you can be like, I don't really have an answer for that right this moment. But uh, great participation rate. I'm uh, always happy to talk to you guys. Like I always say, uh, I'll, I'll talk to you guys as long as you're asking questions. Up until about three hours and then like my voice starts going away. So uh, uh, yeah, another another successful three hour live stream with you guys with very minimal problems. So uh, the replay is on the channel if you want to check it out. Uh, I'd love to uh, hear some feedback on what you think about some of those Ridiculous. I got some ridiculous questions, guys. I got some really, really weird ones this time, especially about people's boyfriends watching me naked and stuff. Yeah, you'll have to you have to watch to find out. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about next week plans, guys. I am going back into the multiverse next week as we are going to be talking about the book of the month for Stephen King, which is Gerald's Game. Now, with Gerald's Game, I'm not rereading it because I just reread it right before that Mike Flanagan adaptation came out on Netflix a couple years back. So uh, I, I'm not rereading it, but obviously I still want to cover it. I didn't feel like I needed to reread it when I just read it re recently. Most of these I'm rereading them because I read them when I was 15. So I felt like I needed to revisit a lot of them. That one, obviously, only a few years ago. So uh, I'll be fine. So we'll be talking all about what makes that book tick and its connections within the multiverse. One of, uh, surprisingly, one of his scarier books at that point in his career there are some things that people are always like oh, i mean i know it's it's kind of you know really troubling to think of yourself being handcuffed to a bed and, and left alone uh no there's way more scary stuff in there than that yes there's there's some stuff in there that will absolutely chill you to the core and i want to talk about what makes that happen and then i'll also do my book haul uh book haul for october is gonna come a little early this month because there are a lot of things going on like we're taking the kids to ren fest tomorrow uh renaissance festival here in texas is a big big deal and it's an all-day event and then we got scouts and we got the end of little league we got pto and stuff so this week's going to be kind of busy so i want to make sure i went ahead and moved the the book haul up a little bit because i don't know how much time we'll have to get to it later this month and i don't want to be doing the previous month book haul like the last week of the next month. So that's why I went ahead and moved it up a little bit. And then a video I was thinking about not doing because I know how the comments get anytime you talk about who you'd like to see cast in a uh, uh, an adapt and a, a book adaptation you want to see someone cast in that role and it always just leads to a lot of bad uh, accusations and a lot of fighting in the comments. And and I try to make this a positive community. I don't want anyone feeling like they can't give their opinion 
on something. Uh, but I just said, you know what, Dune is something that I obviously love so, so much. I've had my head cannon for years and years, and I've kind of adjusted that over time, thinking about modern day actors and things like that. So what I'm going to do for that, I'm going to do my fan casting for Dune Part 2. They put me in the casting chair and said, here, we want you to cast these roles who would you go with? So I'm going to kind of talk about that, talk about why, talk about some characters. And it's more than just like the big three characters that all the major media sites are doing right now. Uh, there are other characters that either weren't in Doom Part 1 or they are in the book and they just weren't in there or they just haven't done them yet. And I think they might still do it. So it's going to be more than just Aaliyah, more than just Fade, and more than just Irulan and, and the Emperor. So there's going to be a few surprises, I think, in there. But uh, we're going to talk about those, and I can't wait because I'm very excited about Dune Part 2, obviously. Now, the last thing here, guys, is this wasn't really anything planned. Um, as, you don't, as you probably know, there's a new Kindle that came out. It's a, the, just an upgraded Paperwhite. They've, they've really kind of tightened the specs, I guess you'd say, on the new Paperwhite. Uh, I have an Oasis. I'm quite happy with it. I didn't feel the need to upgrade. My wife was still using the original paper wipe, and while she likes it, uh, she sees how fast my Oasis goes, and I see her longingly sometimes being like, hmm, because she did not want an Oasis. I got a comment I get on that Oasis. Oh, what a jerk. You upgraded yours and gave your wife your old one, white, and you give her the new one. I don't know why everybody just automatically assumes I'm a jerk. Um, she didn't want an Oasis. She thought that, that was, the e-reader was just too big. That is not what she wanted. She liked the Paperwhite for the size. She liked the Oasis because of how fast it was. Well, guys, I went ahead and upgraded her to the new Paperwhite because I'm just that nice of a guy. So I had so many messages, so many emails, Instagram, Facebook, email, everything, asking me, Mike, what do you think about the new Kindle? <laughs> I was like, I haven't used it or whatever. So I said, okay, people obviously value my opinion on this. I mean, it's my four most viewed videos on this channel. I don't know the horror ones up there, but okay, four of my five most viewed videos on this channel, six. I'm getting behind myself because, hey, that Wheel of Time video finally hit 100,000. All right, let's try this again. Four of my six most viewed videos on this channel are Kindle-based. So people clearly value my opinion on the Kindle. So I'm going to use this new Kindle here over the weekend and kind of I'm going to take it to this baseball game we're going to today and I'm going to kind of use it check it out see what I think about it and then I'm going to do a should you upgrade video like I did with the uh, Oasis and that's just again guys that's because that's what people are asking me for another video people have been asking me for is a which Kindle should I buy so I was thinking that'd be a good one to put out before Black Friday when people are shopping for Kindles and kind of making a decision of which one they want to buy for the holidays and stuff like that so if you hate the Kindle videos I uh, I apologize. I have so many people asking for them and requesting them, and I like to give the people what they want. And also, if you don't want to watch, it's fine, guys. I'm, I'm fine if you don't want to watch every video that I make. It's fine. Uh, again, this is just something that's been requested quite a bit, so I'm going to talk uh, a couple more times about Kindles until, God willing, they do put out the Kindle color and I get myself a brand new one. So guys, that's about it for books. There are some uh, some TV and movie things, actually a lot that I kind of want to talk about here. Uh, first, Hyperion. Uh, this is an adaptation that Bradley Cooper has been trying to get off the ground for a while, but apparently after the success of Dune, it seems like Warner Brothers is getting that itch and they went ahead and they are working with Bradley Cooper to get this adaptation of Dan Simmons' novel made. Now, if you watched the review I did for Hyperion earlier this year, it is a book I absolutely loved. I thought it met the hype and it exceeded it in many ways. I got this new coffee today from Sam's. It's just it's just spectacular. It's like a Texas pecan or something. It's just fantastic. Okay. Anyway, I don't want to share that with you guys because uh, pecan pecan is like the best coffee for whatever reason. I don't know why. Uh, because, I mean, I, I like pecans, but I think I prefer almonds. And I'm really doing this right now in the middle of this weekly update. Uh, Hyperion is one that I feel like it should have probably been done on a streaming service. But it seems like this is very much a passion project for Bradley Cooper. So uh, I'm not going to take his, his dream away from him. I'm just glad it's getting some attention uh, because I think it's a fantastic story. But I really think a streaming service would be awesome with this. Like you have your first episode introducing the world and the pilgrims. And then you have an episode for each one of those pilgrim stories. And then the finale could be the culmination of what happens there at the end. I think that would just be the perfect format for it. Trying to shove all those individual stories in a two-hour movie is going to be a struggle. But again, I'm just happy that it is uh, maybe getting made. I'd say that the, the people, uh, these studios seeing the interest now in some of these 
unfilmable books like Dune, maybe now they can be like, okay, there is an audience for this. Maybe we should make some of these things. So that's what I'm hoping. You know, we just got foundation. So I'm thinking they're seeing, okay, there is an interest in epic space opera and stuff. So we can start doing those. Speaking of space opera, you can't talk about space opera without Star Wars, right? Well, the trailer dropped for the book of Boba Fett, the spinoff from The Mandalorian. And I mean, really, can you call Boba Fett a spinoff of The Mandalorian? I mean, I guess he, he has appeared there. So it's more like a backdoor pilot is what I would call it because I mean, Boba Fett, that's the original, right? So uh, I, I have a hard time calling it a spinoff, but regardless of what you want to call it, got the trailer for it. One of my favorite Star Wars EU books is uh, the Tales from Jabba's Palace. And that's what I really feel I got from that trailer. You really got a glimpse of that seedy underworld of Tatooine that we never really have gotten from the movies. And that's enough for me. The fact that it has Boba Fett in it is just a bonus. You know, I'm excited to see uh, just how everything works in that gangster lifestyle down below, you know, before the surface and seeing how everything really click so uh i watched that trailer i was like I'm, I'm just glad that they took boba fett off of the mandalorian because it felt like it was gonna be one of those things that every time he showed up on the mandalorian i was gonna be like mando who it's all about boba fett now so i think this was the the right move and it looks very cool i'm excited to see it and the fact that robert rodriguez is a big part of this is just it just got me excited to see what they can do in that universe and to talk about witcher season two the trailer when it came out I know everybody kind of clowns Witcher season one now for whatever reason. I, I look, uh, is it as good as you know Game of Thrones? No, I never expected it to be that good. Uh, this looks like uh, it is fixing a lot of the problems with the first one. Like I understand people didn't like that timeline issue that you had in season one. I can get that. I can get that, but it didn't break the show for me. Uh, some things I didn't like. Yeah, obviously the CGI looked kind of poor in, in some spots, especially that dragon and the costuming outside of Geralt looked really, really cheap. It was like Geralt and Yennefer were pretty good. Everybody else, it was just like, wow, this is really bad. So they fixed that Nilf Gideon, Nilf, Nilf Guardian armor. That's they, they listen to a lot of things. You can listen to a lot of things on there. They've done a lot of character correction on there. I think Triss now, they've changed her look a lot to look a lot more like you would expect Triss to look like. Uh, so, I mean, there's a lot of things that look like they listened to the criticism. They didn't let anything really bother them. They didn't do the thing where you attack the fans whenever they have a problem with something. Uh, so I, I think that, that they listened. And it looks like they've spread that budget around a little more. That was a huge hit for Netflix. People don't want to talk about it now. That was a huge hit for Netflix. So I think they're willing to spend some more money into it now. Uh, I'm kind of surprised they didn't try to get it out around the same time as Will of Time to be counter-programming. But uh, it's coming out for Christmas. And that's fine. Right when Will of Time is ending, you're going to have uh, Season 2 of The Witcher. I think it looks cool. Uh, it's going to be following Blood of Elves, which is a book that I have read, which is going to be all about you know uh, getting Siri to care more and have beginning her training as a witcher and i'm very very excited about it because that was some of my favorite parts of that book her and uh was it zafin or yigrin i can't think of his name and it's been so long since i've read those books uh but uh yeah uh, the, the dwarf character I, I love him and series interactions in that book so i hope that they really do kind of go all into that and give us some stuff and there's still some stuff from sort of destiny that they're gonna do there's that story grain of truth which is very much like a modern retelling of the beauty and the beast uh, i think that, that that's going to be in there too and you got tormund giants bane is playing that character really crazy stuff so i'm excited for witcher season two i don't know why anybody wouldn't be it looks really cool and guys it's, it's henry cavill fighting monsters i'm there right so uh i'm excited for that it starts right around christmas time um this one i don't have too much knowledge on guys I, you know i've never watched anime i just started reading manga but i went ahead and watched that trailer for cowboy bebop the live action adaptation on netflix now i can't say either way if it's faithful to the source material or not if it looks anything like it what i'll say is that trailer looks like a lot of god dang fun uh that's all i'll say about it i love quirky batshit insane science fiction that doesn't need any explanation it just is what it is it just goes for it it just embraces the absurdity of it i love that that trailer to me looks like farscape without the muppets and i love farscape so i'm very very excited to check out at least you know the pilot and see what i think about it, it looks like a really fun time and uh I, I who knows if i like it enough maybe that'll encourage me to go and watch the anime so uh, i'm sure you've got the, the 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 manga fans and the anime fans who are being like oh it looks like shit it looks stupid because i know that netflix ruins a lot of those live action adaptations uh but uh 
as far as just watching the pilot, yeah, they got me with that trailer. I think it looks really, really cool. And that is the anime that a lot of people recommend that I start with is Cowboy Bebop. So I feel like maybe this is a, a good place to start with something like this. Or I'm kind of the target demo for this. I'm to, to really be the type who would check something out like this without having to have read it or, or seen the anime first. So I'll be interested to see what you guys think about it that are hardcore fans of the original. Are, are you excited for it? Because I think it looks really, really fun. And I'll close, guys, by talking about the we finished our spooky season movies with our with our nine year old, and we watched Poltergeist. This was the one we kind of saved for the end because we thought it was probably the scariest of the movies that he was picking. And man, that's a fantastic movie. It still is. It's aged incredibly, incredibly well. And, you know, it's not a Steven Spielberg movie. Uh, it's a Toby Hooper uh, actually who who directed that movie. Um, Steven Spielberg has his fingerprints all over it. It does still seem like a very dark, ambling kind of movie. And uh, it just it has some spectacular performances in it. I, I can't think of the actress's name right now, but the mother in that movie just hit a home run. She is just an emotional powerhouse in that movie and just awesome. She is just spectacular. But those kids did great jobs too. And of course, uh, Craig T. Nelson, I mean, who doesn't love Coach, right? I mean, just a spectacular movie. I think it's aged incredibly well. My kids, like, he really liked it. He really did. He didn't get creeped out by it nearly as much as I expected. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the clown, the tree, there's stuff that still kind of makes me be like, oh, it makes my skin crawl. And I think there's stuff from that movie that I still do today, like the part where they're doing the counting between the uh, the flash and the thunder. Uh, that's really, really cool. Uh, that's something that I still do today. And it just, uh, it's, it's a movie that just kind of stuck in my memory. And uh, I'm glad to see that it didn't, uh, you know, scar my kid for life. You know, so that's, that's encouraging. So like I said recently, guys, I think I got myself a horror buddy because uh, not only did he like it, He's interested in watching the sequels. I'm like, oh, I don't know if you want to do that. But, you know, hey, I, I, I am here uh, to uh, for anything horror that he is interested in watching. I'm excited about it. So, guys, hope you had a good Halloween. And I uh, hope you are having a great start to November. Why don't you drop in the comments. Let me know what you're reading, what you're watching, what you're listening to, and what you are playing. There are no wrong answers. Have yourselves an awesome weekend.